Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuels is a faithful recreation of the original kart racer from the PlayStation 1 era, with some nice juicy additions including extra characters, tracks and cosmetic options. Multiplayer is completely compelling and a real laugh with friends, both online and through split screen. It can be frantically exciting with powerful items, or also frustratingly tragic when barraged by attacks and pushed back in the last place. Now let the review begin and let's see if this remake can even overtake Mario Kart 8. Earth is visited by an extraterrestrial being, Nitrous Oxide, the self-claimed fastest racer in our galaxy. I'm the fastest racer in the galaxy! Oxide challenges Earth in his survival of the fastest, beckoning Earth's greatest driver to race him with our defeat, meaning Earth is self being enslaved. The story campaign is quite short but lengthened with the typical crash format of replaying levels for collectibles. The real meat of the game is the multiplayer racing, it's complete chaos and addictively amazing. <laughs> Nitro Fueled is a dedicated and complete remake from the ground up. The modern game tracks are overflowing with colour and there's brilliant attention to detail and animations that bring the cartoony surrounding environments to life. From beginnings as a light ray scorching crash cove to the illuminated Codex's castle, there's a consistent level of high quality designs and dedication to staying loyal to the original game. There's 18 remade tracks but Nitro Fueled then manages to knock it up a gear by bringing in an extra 13 tracks from the Nitro Kart game. In particular, the Hyper Speedway is a fun map that has you traversing various portals. This track has actually been shortened from the original. There's 10 playable characters from Nitro Kart and 16 from the original Crash Team Racing, and it's brilliant actually getting to play as the villainous Nitrous Oxide this time. There's actually some pretty nostalgic inducing retro skins and a retro track, but they're sadly exclusive to the PlayStation version. <laughs> At least the exclusivity makes some sense with the original Crash Team Racing being exclusive to the PlayStation, but no doubt it would be better if everyone had access to this content. There's also a truckload of unlockable skins and card customization options. I've got to say there's some brilliant creativity behind the designs of some of the skins. Ever wondered what Dingo Dao would look like if he was a panda? Or if Engin abandoned his science and became a ballerina? Brilliant. But one nitpick would have to be the voice acting. It's mostly fine, but in some places it's just completely off compared with the original. Just look at this comparison of Nitro Fueled Uka Uka with the originals. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. He just sounds like he's been drained of all that menacing, villainous energy that Clancy Brown brought to the table. I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! Nitro Fueled feels fantastic to play, rewarding aggressive and fast-paced gameplay. It feels smugly satisfying taking cheap shots at other racers, knocking them back a few places and ruining their day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm last. <laughs> Taking the time to practice and learn each track in and out will net you valuable experience and knowledge of sneaky shortcuts, while mastering drifting and boost drifting adds an extra layer of depth and skill that makes the competitive multiplayer racing so enticing and genuinely challenging. Maximizing your jump air time also rewards you with speed boosts, and landing has this really satisfying bouncy feel to it. There's plenty of power-ups on the tracks and they'll help push you into higher positions. Or if you're unlucky, you'll find yourself barraged by attacks that'll knock you into last place. It can be a bit frustrating at times, but it's all part of the fun. It's not all sad though, the way the game is designed means the further behind you are, the better weapons and items you get access to, in an effort to help catch up. Throughout your kart racing you're going to be awarded Wumpa coins, provided you've connected to the PlayStation Network. 
even if you're playing offline single player. You ultimately buy new characters, skins and card cosmetics with these Wumpa coins through a scummy store that changes its products every 24 hours. This means that if you're not connected to the internet, there's a lot of characters that you'll not be able to unlock. This store reeks of microtransactions, but thankfully there aren't actually any microtransactions, at least yet. But Activision has a bad reputation of adding in microtransactions to games like Call of Duty after the game's initial release and once all the reviews have already been written. On the more technical side, the biggest disappointment would have to be the game running at 30 frames a second, and it's the same frame rate no matter what console you're on, from Nintendo Switch to Xbox One X. The Horror It's just something that you're gonna have to put up with, I'm afraid. I suppose at least the original PlayStation 1 game was also 30 FPS. Loading screens and startup times in between races can take a little while, especially on the Nintendo Switch. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something to be aware of that can sour the experience. And one more personal nitpick would be the key bindings. I'd really like to see some rebindable keys. In the rare situations where I've crashed into a wall and need to reverse, I've always had butterfingers because both available control schemes use down on the D-pad for reversing, which is a little bit out of place. Just like in the original CTR, the campaign is great. The hub worlds are lush and brimming with nostalgia, and it's an ideal way to learn the tracks, but the campaign is short. You can knock it out in a few hours. Time trials, relics, gems, and collectible CTR tokens do offer a fair bit of replayability, with some bonus extra unlockable cosmetic options this time. There's also additional battle modes, but to be honest, I'm not really a massive fan of these and it seems like not many others are, with online lobbies for battles incredibly slow to fill. They're really clunky to play, while maps for modes like Capture the Flag are super small and frustrating to traverse. Though I still appreciate that these modes of play are carried over from the original, but you'll find me in the online races. Looking forward, the game is planning battle passes and new seasons with all new characters, and as someone who generally dislikes microtransactions, I'm honestly okay with this. There's truckloads of extra content already available in this remake. While battle passes generally seem fair and still require you to earn your rewards through gameplay. Overall, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is great, and I'm giving it 84 Wumpa Fruits out of 100. This is absolutely something and I'll continue to play with friends online. I loved replaying the campaign even if I may have been under the influence of nostalgia, and I did also thoroughly enjoy the multiplayer. Nitro Fueled goes above and beyond the efforts of remaking a game, with all these extra little bits of content, but while also remaining faithful and loyal to the original. I did go through a few shortcomings, but they thankfully don't detract too much from the full experience. If you liked the video, like the video, or subscribe. I'm not even sure what I'll be doing next, but I'm working on a huge and special Final Fantasy VII video that's going to take a while. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.